Welcome to Now in Android, episode 27. Many things going on. Let's see what happened in the last couple of weeks. Android Studio 4.1 happened. 4.1's been out for a while, but in Canary and beta versions, and now it is stable. So if you wait for your tools to be stable, this be the time that you have waited for, for 4.1. So I've talked about this release in the past and some of the features in there, but just to highlight some of the things that you could check out. Database Inspector, the ability to actually see what is happening in the database on your device from the host machine, or even to make changes and see those changes reflected on the device. New project templates. Uh, so now when you create a new project, you can use one of the templates that automatically comes with material design components, just making that whole flow to get uh, beautiful UIs much easier. Integrated emulator window. So now you have the ability to pop up the emulator inside of the IDE window instead of in its separate window that you then have to manage on your limited screen space. Integrated development environment. You can't spell it without integrated. So that's what they did with the emulator. Dagger and Hilt code navigation. You can now click on these gutter actions from your code to see what is going on with the dagger and the Hilt types in your code. And finally, ML model binding. Uh, this is the ability for Studio to import TensorFlow light models and then auto-generate some code that makes it easier to interact with that model from your app code. You can learn more about the release from a video that Yasin Rezgi produced, as well as a blog article that Scott Swarthout published, or the Android Studio release notes, or you know what? Heck, why don't you just download the release and play with it and see for yourself? Mad Skills is a new series of videos that we're publishing, and it started this week. The intent is to help educate developers on what we mean by modern Android development, more specifically, how to actually use the elements that we're talking about with modern Android development to make it easier to write better applications. So this is going to be basically a series of series, series, series not sure what the word is there where we focus on a subtopic for a couple of few weeks and then move on to a separate subtopic. The topic we're focusing on this week, the way that we're starting the series is with navigation. So I posted an overview of navigation component and then the second episode focused on how to do dialogue destinations. We'll have a couple more episodes next week before we then focus on another topic area inside of Mad Skills. Over the course of the long series, which frankly we haven't even planned the end of yet, we'll cover things ranging from Kotlin on the language side to Android Studio on the tool side and various sub-tools there. APIs, subset of Jetpack, such as Navigation Component API, as well as distribution, talking about Android app bundles. So check out the playlist to find out what we have there already and check back to find out what we continue posting in the weeks to come. Should be pretty fun. Also, uh, one of the problems with technical videos, which these are all meant to be fairly deeply technical, uh, is that they're not necessarily searchable and you, it's kind of hard to copy and paste from a video, right? Uh, unless you're doing screenshots and that doesn't really work well for code. So with each of the videos, if there is no article content associated with that content already in the video, then we will be writing a parallel article. Uh, so then you can consume your content however you want, or you can check out the video and then go to the article for the details and the text and the stuff to copy paste if you prefer. Uh, so check out the videos on YouTube, check out uh, the articles on Medium, and see where we go from here. And remember, don't get even, get mad. Kotlin Vocabulary is an ongoing series of articles and videos, and there have been a couple new episodes posted. First of all, Flor Florina Mutinescu posted an article and a video about how Kotlin's default arguments work. This is a great language feature that makes it possible to basically have more condensed code in a couple of different ways. So imagine in a reality that does not exist where Kotlin existed when we wrote the code for Vue.java. We could get by with just one constructor for that class instead of what we now have, which is at least four constructors. And that's because default arguments allow you to supply a default value for those arguments, and that allows you to collapse all of these overloads uh, into just one uh, function in many cases. It also allows you to write more concise code on the calling side, because if those default arguments uh, and default values are actually pretty good for your use case, then chances are you don't even need to supply them, and you can provide uh, a much more simplified parameter list. So Florina covers uh, how this all works, how to use it, and how it looks under the covers. 
Also, Marat Yenner posted an article and a video on Kotlin delegates explaining how that feature works, as well as how class delegates work, where it defers work to another class entirely, and property delegates, where you can defer the getter and setter to other code. There's something interesting that Kotlin provides, which is not only just the language feature, but it also provides other, uh, other delegates uh, that you can use just out of the box, like by lazy. This article doesn't go into details on those, but there's a little bit of teaser there. Maybe there will be a future article that goes into some of those details as well. Uh, play billing subscriptions is covered in a new article by Karen Chang uh, to help you understand some of the new features and requirements related to subscriber acquisition and retention. There are new changes that take effect on November 1st. So if your app sells subscription products, you may want to check this out to see what you need to do in your app. Isai Damier posted a two article series on biometric authentication. Part one discusses why you might want to consider using biometric authentication. And there's two interesting reasons uh, that I ran across there. One is maybe your app is really secure by its nature. Maybe it's a banking app or something where you really need the user to log in maybe every time they use it. Well, if they're typing their password every time, that's pretty tedious. Biometric authentication could allow you to provide the security that you need for that kind of application without requiring the user to jump through these hoops every time they use it or every day or on a frequent basis, right? The other case is maybe you punted on all that tedium and you, you'd kind of like security for your social Social media app or whatever, but you punted and just said, you know what, just log in when you install it because we don't want people to have to retype their password every time. If you look into biometric authentication, then maybe you can provide the security that you'd kind of like on an ongoing basis without actually requiring the user to do stuff that is more of a hassle. Uh, so. Our, uh, step one in the series covers all of that stuff. Um, it also goes into details on how to use the biometric prompt API, uh, which is the end in the Android X biometric library uh, to handle authentication. And then part two walks through some of the details of using that API, as well as the recommended design flow of actually authenticating users. Motion Tags is an ongoing series of screencasts uh, on the Android developers YouTube channel. And they've just posted their sixth show there, which goes into details on key position. This is the tag that handles uh, layout properties, which can then be used in the middle of a motion layout animation. So you can check out the playlist for the entire series, learn about all the different tags for motion layout, uh, and you can certainly check out the latest episode that was posted. Finally, ADB50, the latest uh, podcast episode is out um, called Aptly Named, and uh, we believe it is. Tor and Romain and I talked with Ryan Mitchell on the framework team about how resources work in general and how the AAPT2 tool works in particular. So as usual, all of the links to all of the stuff that I talked about today are in the article. So check out the article for those details. And if you like the video today, go ahead and like and share and subscribe to the Android Developers channel on YouTube. Thanks.